Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss basic table-level data validation tests in Oracle. Specifically, we're going to look at row counts, unique keys, and foreign keys. Some of the simplest data validation tests are table-level row counts. Let's go demo four common row count tests right now. Rule set number one, row counts. There's full row counts, entire table, partial row counts, take a subset, relative row counts, compare one table to another, and recent row counts. Similar to number two, except you're filtering by date to get the most recent. For test case one, the full row count, we're going to take the count of the table demo HR countries, and if it's not exactly equal to 25, we're going to return a fail, otherwise a pass. Here I am an Oracle SQL developer. I have the DB test case snippets SQL up. You can download that from GitHub. And I've highlighted test case 01 and I'm going to execute it. Yep. And there's my result, pass of one. Test case number two is a partial row count. We're taking a count from the same demo HR countries table, but we're filtering by the region ID equals one. And in this case, there should only be eight rows that match that criteria. Back in SQL Developer, I am on test case number two, highlighted it, execute it, and voila, get a pass. Data validation test number three, relative row counts. So in this case, we're going to verify that the count of countries is five times or greater than the count of regions. And I'm going to go switch over to Oracle SQL Developer to break this down better for you. Here we are in SQL Developer at test case number three, with the relative row counts. And we're gonna, we're gonna learn something here. It's like debugging an application. Here's our SQL statement. You can highlight this guy here and execute it, and we will get a count of how many rows are in the HR countries table, 25. And then we can highlight this guy and say, well, how many, and run it, and how many rows are in regions? Four. We can highlight this guy in between and execute that. And we're going to get a country count and a region count. So you can see and break apart what's happening in the query by highlighting, running, highlighting and running the different individual components. And if we highlight the entire thing, now that we look down here, we can see what's going to happen. When the country's count, 25, is less than five times the region count, which would be 20, if 25 is less than 20, fail. But because 25 is greater, it's going to pass. So we can execute it, we can see it pass, and our final data validation test, test number four, is the recent row count. And we're gonna go look at that, but basically we're gonna make use of sysdate, which is current time. There's a field, das, date last updated. Make sure that it's greater than or equal to right now, minus 10 days. Get a count of it, and then do some wrapper logic. Back in SQL Developer, at test case four, verify the recent row count. Let's highlight the inner SQL, run it. We're gonna get a count, zero. There's zero rows whose date last updated is greater than or equal to 10 days ago. That's gonna fail. Let's run it, and what do we get? We get a fail. <laughs> now, if I say go back 100 days, I wrote the script for 10 days ago. If I go back 100 days, it's gonna pass. Next up, rule set number two, foreign and unique keys. Now, quick caveat here, good database design would preclude the need for these tests. You'd have constraints that enforce the foreign keys or the uniqueness, but, Life happens, and you will encounter implied foreign keys, unique keys that are missing the constraints. They're in your ER diagram listed as, hey, this should be a foreign key or this should be a unique key, but they just aren't there, and they aren't being enforced. And you can read the GitHub article, for example, of when you'll encounter this. Uh, use these tests here that we're going to walk through to spot these violations. We're going to look at three test cases, uh, unique, key has no duplicates, foreign key children have orphans, and the foreign key parent has no children. So let's get started with test case number five. And there should usually be constraints for this and you don't need to test for it, but if you do have to test for it and you wanna know if unique key has duplicates, then you would run this SQL. And we'll go look at that in SQL Developer and run it in different parts. Here in SQL Developer at test case number five, Let's start from the inside and see what's going on. Let's just select this piece here and execute it to give you a visual. So we have a country name and a count. We're grouping by the country name and then counting how many instances there are. And in this case, there's always one. If there was a duplicate, the count would be two. 
So that's why we would add the having clause on. So if we run this and add the having clause on, nothing is greater than one. They'll all disappear. So let's execute that. Nothing. And then if we include our wrapper that converts it down to a single line, pass fail, run it, and we're going to get a pass. That's how this uniqueness works. Select your field. If you have multiple fields, if there's five unique key fields, put comma field two, comma field three, comma field four, and just string them all out here and matching down here in the group by. That's all you have to do. And that's what it should look like. And you can modify it to meet your needs by adding it, changing the uh, table name, schema name, and adding, changing the column names, and adding any additional columns you might have. Next up, data validation test number six. We're going to check if the foreign key children are orphans. So we'll go break this down in SQL Developer. Here we are, SQL Developer, test case number six. Let's jump down into the guts and see what's going on. I've commented this out temporary, temporarily. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, give me the distinct list of region IDs in the demo HR countries table. Run that. And there's four distinct IDs. Row one, two, three, four, and then there's the values. Now let's add the parent table region ID back in and let's left join it and see what we get. Now we get the child ID and the parent ID and they're matching. If one of these were missing, let's say the two was missing, so we had a two here, the child and the parent was blank. Then when we do the key region ID is null, the parent region ID, if two were null, it would show up. But None of them are null, therefore it comes back empty. And when we use the wrapper, it's gonna pass because the count is zero. There are none missing. And finally, test case number seven, it's the opposite of test case number six. We wanna find a foreign key parent that has no children. Whereas here, we are finding children that had no parent. So let's go look at that in SQL Developer. Here we are, SQL Developer, test case number seven. Uh, we have the parent on the left position, the from, and on the right position, we have the location, the child table. And so let's go ahead and just run it to get a visual of what's going on. We'll run this bare minimum here. There we go, now that's nice. Look at this, there's the child and the parent, and we have a bunch of nulls. And the nulls mean that the parent's populated, but the child's not populated. So if we go one more, add this guy in, execute it, we're gonna get all of the nulls. Those are parents that have no children. That's the purpose of the test case. Now, in my particular case, I'm gonna exclude those particular parents for whatever reason, they're null and that's okay. So I tack that on, then I get nothing. And then when I run it through my wrapper, when the count is nothing, it's gonna pass. When it's greater than nothing, it'll fail. To download the SQL scripts in this video, open a browser. In the URL, go to www.github.com slash data research labs, all one word. It pops up, click the SQL scripts link or filter to find it and scroll down till you see the data validation scripts in the markdown language. Click it and scroll down. Now, I don't have the green plum links built or the SQL server and I don't have the videos built. They will be, it's just gonna take time. But for our purposes here, let's go to Oracle. Let's look at, sure, let's look at the uh, diff checks. Right click, open in a new tab. And in this case, all the details are collapsed. So expand it, big bunch of SQL that's gonna schema diff and tell you source to target, whether the structure's changed. And you can hover over this little clipboard, click that, and voila, you've copied it. And if I were to go over and open up a notepad and paste that in, there it is. There's all the SQL properly formatted. So that is how you open up and use the SQL scripts from this video and all the rest of the videos. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.